Welcome back to your Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel. Recently, the League of Women Voters of Sunapee and Kearsarge hosted a forum of our local New Hampshire House representatives. Over the next few weeks, we'll hear from five of them. Today, our guest is Karen Ebel from New London. Uh, my name is Karen Ebel. I represent Merrimack. District 7, nowhere near the number of towns that uh, Representative Damon represents, but with um, Representative Wolf, I represent uh, Newbury and New London. I am serving in my sixth term, which is astonishing to me, but it's 12 years. Um, this year, I, I, some of you who have known me for a while, I've been serving on the public um, Public Works Committee, which deals with infrastructure and the capital budget. This year, I made the I was transferred over to the Finance Committee, and uh, the Finance Committee uh, obviously works on the budget for the state, and also works on any bills that uh, have appropriations associated with them. The Finance Committee, for those that don't know, it's divided into three divisions. They're like subcommittees. Division three is Health and Human Services Matters. Division two is uh, Education and Transportation. And Division one, which is the division that I serve on, is what I refer to as the Kitchen Sink Division because we have every other uh, agency responsibility in the state. So it's a very um, interesting, active, uh, busy, huge learning curve kind of committee. And in fact, we had your bill just recently uh, on the, the accident. Yeah, the disability one, because we work on um, retirement matters. In addition to that, um, I serve as the Democratic leader pro tem. This is the second term that I've been doing that. Prior to that, I was the deputy speaker of the House. I also serve on the Rules Committee, uh, the House Facilities Committee, um, and I've been assigned to the Special Committee on the Efficacy of New Hampshire's COVID Response, and I vice chair that. I also um, uh, am a, the founder and the chair of the state's um, Solid Waste Working Group, which is a broad spectrum stakeholder commission that works on one of my favorite subjects, trash. And we have folks on there that represent landfills, municipalities, recycling concerns, um, and we work very closely with DOT. Most recently, we worked with them on the just issued um, state solid waste management plan. So a lot of the bills that I end up getting engaged with are bills that have been uh, recommended by the Solid Waste Working Group um, in furtherance of the Solid Waste Management Plan. So for instance, last year um, I introduced a bill that would start to uh, require large generators of food waste um, to either compost them or donate them or do something other than throwing them in, throwing the food waste into the, into our landfills because about um, a third by weight of of uh, trash that goes into our landfills is food waste and it's really. Um, really a waste. <laughs> um, but the way we started this was that if you, ge if a concern generates one ton or more of food waste a week, then if there's a compost facility or a donation opportunity, I mean, we rank them, they really are supposed to go to food banks uh, first, uh, then they're supposed to compost. So that's newly uh, up and running. I, you know, and, and We'll see, we'll see how that goes, but you gotta start somewhere because we're trying to divert as much waste as we can from our landfills. So this year, um, actually from a constituent standpoint, uh, started right here on our own Pleasant Lake. There was an interest in uh, the town being able to reduce the speed limit seasonally to 20 miles an hour. And believe it or not, our statutes only allow a town to reduce the speed limit to 25, even though the state can go to 20. So um, I just, it just passed uh, the Senate, so it's on its way to the governor, and 
uh, the town of New London can either on its own or upon citizen petition reduce the speed limit on our congested roads to 20 miles an hour. Um, the other uh, bill that I introduced that I really had a broad spectrum of uh, stakeholders for was a bill that banned the disposal of lithium ion batteries in solid waste facilities because of the unbelievable fire risk. I had uh, the state fire marshal there, landfills, municipal association, um, all sorts of folks to support the bill, and that passed the House uh, unanimously, and the uh, committee in the Senate that was responsible for it just recommended its passage unanimously. So I feel like that's um, on its way. And then the other really big initiative that I'm associated with this year, again, a uh, solid waste working group uh, sponsored bill, is to ban uh, the sale of a limited number of consumer products that have intentionally added PFAS. And if you're familiar with PFAS at all, you know that our drinking water utilities are having to filter out PFAS to four to 10 parts per trillion. That's like a cup in Lake Winnipesaukee of PFAS, and that's how um, challenging it is from a health standpoint. And so that's been really uh, an interesting and difficult journey, but the House passed it 233 to 140 a couple of weeks ago, and I was in the Senate this morning. So that's sort of a summary of what I've been doing. Um, I told you about finance. I'm in the kitchen sink division. We can talk about all sorts of things there. Uh, one of the things I like to do the most is help my constituents, and um, I really uh, appreciate people asking if there's agency concerns uh, to see if I can't help move things along. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Karen, for your work and looking out for our local interests. Next week, we'll be joined by Dan Wolf from Newberry, her district partner, for his summary of activities. The full two hours can be seen this Saturday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at noon and 7 p.m. anytime on demand at YCNnow.com. When we return, Dina Stahlheiber of the Center for the Arts will join us with an invitation to their annual gala and more. But first, let's hear from another one of the businesses that make YCN viable. This program is supported by The Intertown Record, your weekly hometown community newspaper covering the Kearsarge-Sunapee-Sunshine region of New Hampshire. The Intertown Record.